Well, a day has finally arrived. I've dipped into my children's inheritance and bought myself a table saw. Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome to my workshop. And in this video, we're going to be unboxing the Axminster Craft 216 table saw. Let's get tinkering. So let's look at what we've got here. I've got seven boxes, but I've bought more than just the table saw on its own. These two boxes here are the main table saw. This is a heavy duty mobile base that Axminster also sell. These two boxes here are the sliding table, which is an optional extra, which I bought. This box here is the cabinet for the table saw, which is also an optional extra. And this box is a mystery. It doesn't say what it is or what it's to do with. We will find out. Most of the boxes have some form of damage on them. I'm not overly concerned with that. The whole purpose of the boxes is to protect the contents inside. So as long as the contents inside aren't damaged, then we'll be fine. And that'll be a testament to how well the packed they are. Each part comes in its own plastic bag and layered between each part was a piece of corrugated cardboard to protect the parts from each other. I've unpacked everything and I can't find any instructions for how to actually assemble it. It's possible it's in the mystery box, so I'm going to open up the mystery box and we shall see. So the mystery box had some workshop wax for the table saw which I'd forgotten I'd purchased. That was a nice surprise, but it didn't come with the instructions. I'm hoping the instructions are somewhere else. So all the parts are very nicely painted in a hammerite type finish. It's not hammerite, I think it's just a gloss paint that's a little bit speckled, not completely flat, which is fine. The thickness of all of the parts is two millimeter steel. And it's coming up at 1.95, so it's Possibly 13 standard wire gauge, or possibly 12. 12 is probably a bit, given it's got a coating on it, it's probably um, 13 standard wire gauge steel. The corners and things that are all welded <coughs> are, aren't just tack welded, they're welded right along the seams, which is quite nice. It's what you'd expect. So I've got no real worries about this. This is a pretty heavy part. It does have a small amount of just cosmetic damage just here. Nothing really to worry about. And I shall go and inspect all the other parts, but it's not something that you necessarily want to see. The table saw itself had instructions for all the accessories, so I was able to use these. The instructions are quite poor quality print. It looks like newspaper print on cheap photocopy paper. And due to the low resolution and lack of colour, some pictures were difficult to make out. To make matters worse, the orientation of the first two images are rotated by 90 degrees and flipped with respect to each other. As a result, I build, unbuild and rebuild the first two panels. I've fed this back to Axminster, so hopefully they will fix this in their next manual. The shelf is about a quarter of the way up the cabinet. I think they've done this to aid rigidity of the cabinet, but as a result you lose some space inside of it. My fingers are getting very cold and have gone numb, so I find it difficult to fit these last few nuts and bolts. It's time to go in and warm up. The cabinet is almost complete. These feet are adjustable and made of heavy rubber, not plastic. They are the same as the feet that come with the saw. The cabinet door slips onto the hinges. The handle is a bit unconventional. It is basically a bolt that screws into a welded nut on the frame. If you intend to use the cupboard regularly, then you might have to think of a better solution. The table saw is heavy, very heavy, not really movable on your own, but I managed to roll it out of the box. Plastic push stick, the riving knife, some hose, presumably this is the hose for the main unit, it's a 
half a meter of hose and then this is the hose that goes with the crown blade uh, crown guard this um, from all the videos I would have assumed or I did assume was metal but it's not it's plastic um, it's made out of three mil thick plastic by the looks of things same sort of plastic that this is made out of and this says it's ABS so it's probably ABS then got four feet and hard fixing hardware nuts basically oh, bolts sorry Some more fixing hardware and two wheels, plastic wheels. Then got a load of tools. I've got a 24 millimeter spanner and a rod, which I assume is for changing the blade. Got some hose clips. There's four of those, so that's pretty good. You've got been given them for both ends for the dust extraction. Then there's a bag of various Allen keys and a 13 and a 15 mil spanner. And then there's this, which is a little holder to hold this up. And then lastly, there's this plastic thing here, which is the adapter got lots of things for the hoses to go on each end and convert to looks like convert to the 100 mil diameter hose that it says it needs for dust extraction so they're all the bits now let's start putting it together so this is looking inside the table saw from the bottom so the saw bed is um, here. This is all cast iron. All this is cast iron. All this is cast iron. All this round here is cast iron. Here's the motor. It's a pretty big beast. The frame itself is three millimeters. Um, steel, so it's quite thick. All of the nuts here are welded underneath, quite large welds. And you can see the size of the welds for all the parts, they've gone across all the seams. So that all looks pretty good. This looks like it's just tacked on. I think this is just providing a bit of rigidity for this surface here which is the back of the saw there's the the hole for the um, that the dust extraction comes from okay first I put the handle on the side that controls the angle of the blade then the handle on the front that controls the height of the blade I then fit the 100mm dust extraction port and connect it up to the saw using the provided flex hose. The supplied feet would normally screw into the base and hold the bottom of the saw in place, but because I've got the optional cabinet, these holes are used to secure the cabinet in place sandwiching the bottom of the saw between the saw and the cabinet. Sorry I messed up the framing in this shot. I'm fitting the right hand side table extension. This is made of sheet steel and screws into threaded holes in the side of the cast iron table. I then fit the rear table extension made of the same steel. This has gaps that line up with the mitre slots so that any jigs using the mitre slots are free to pass. Both the side and rear extensions sag a small amount, but I don't think this will be an issue. The slots are a standard 
19mm slot and the extension table has got holes so that you can push your sleds or other jigs that you've got all the way past the cast iron table and into the extension without them fouling. The cast iron insert plate is fixed down with five Phillips cross head screws, not the more commonly used posi drive heads. I remove this, raise the blade and fit the riving knife. There are grub screws that are used to align the riving knife to the blade, but from the factory it was perfect. I now adjust the insert plate to make it level with the bed using the grub screws that are either side of each fixing screw. It takes a while to set these correctly, but after some trial and error I managed to get the plate perfectly flat with respect to the cast iron bed. I then refit the crown guard. The crown guard is held on with this little hand nut here. Once it's on it's quite easy to adjust. And connect the hose between the crown guard and the main saw. The saw specifications say it needs an 850 cubic meter per hour extraction system. That's 500 cubic feet per minute or 235 litres per second. Quite why the industry can't settle on one unit, I don't know. I'm on to the last box now. This contains the rip fence and fence rail. See here the rip fence rail, it's got a bit of damage to it at the end. I should try and flatten it out. And fix it. If not, I'll ring them up and get another one. I successfully straighten the rail and fit it to the saw, but I also noticed the plastic end caps are cracked. There was no damage to the box, so it must have been packed this way. It's a minor breakage on a cosmetic part, so I choose to ignore it. The auxiliary fence has also got some damage on the corner there. We just file that straight, but obviously it didn't fare very well in the shipping. It's worse than I thought. I'm going to need a new auxiliary fence. I call up Axminster Customer Service and they send me a new auxiliary fence and the two plastic end caps for the rail without any quibble. Checked the fence for square against the mitre slot and it is perfectly square straight out the factory which is great I can't detect any misalignment at all finally I fit the front on the cabinet I think I should have done this earlier and in the absence of anyone to help me to move the saw I prop it up to gain access to the fixing points this is probably not very safe so avert your eyes as I do this I wouldn't want thousands of comments on my unsafe practices Actually, I love getting comments, good and bad, so fill your boots. I'll set the fence up so it's just not touching the blade. It's almost touching. Now I've got to move this onto zero. It's finally time to tidy up, remove the grease, on the cast iron bed and treat it to some machine wax. And that's it done. I still haven't powered the saw up yet and made some test cuts as I want to also fit the sliding table and the dust extraction system. These will be future videos so be sure to subscribe. Well I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please leave a thumbs up and in part two I'll be unboxing and assembling the table slide that goes to this side of the table saw. If you don't want to miss it, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, why not subscribe by clicking my logo? It's free, and YouTube will add some of my videos to your feed. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.